She was growing into herself, more comfortable with her beauty, beginning to think about what she might do with her life, what she could contribute to the world. She had a routine, one that she would rarely break. The morning, walking to the local coffee shop, she passes the painting in the window, ignites a cigarette. Down the path, crosses the cobbled street and sits in her usual spot. Always the same, every day. No one knew her name or why she behaved in such a way. She seemed to see so thoroughly all that appeared around her. First the light will break, white and pink, before it turns to blue. It's like all the souls are gathered up and in between the clouds, they collect and dissipate. I have observed the passages of light throughout the day. It's ever changing. Robert Frost, a poet who lived well into his 80s, left us with locking letters of words depicting characters lost within themselves, as well as a rotting mailbox frosted with rust, isolated in the mountains and trees. In 1895, Frost was staying alone in a cottage on a sippy mountain when he heard a knock on the old lockless door. Too terrified to answer, he jumped through a window in the back calling, come in from the outside. The next morning, Frost returned to the cottage and found one of his neighbors motionless on the floor. A leashed dog, he resists his urge to bite in exchange for love. It is the choice between living in isolation, suppression, or compliance. Most days, I feel like a modern, undercover rebel. Like the Victorian girls dying to rip off their corsets and unravel their perfect curls. Fancy parties, curtsies as if they are marionettes, off to meet future husbands. But behind every smile is a lie. I like black coffee. Bold blend filled to the rim. It has taken me years to find my inner coffee, the taste, aroma. There's something very safe, subdued, even covert about a coffee shop. It is unsuspecting, unassuming. I can chart the particular pattern to the morning rush. The early birds, the gray-haired retirees with bifocals resting at the bottom of their nose. E-readers or books on hand with names like Better Than Good creating the life you want to lead. Not truly here to read, rather they crave for companionship as their lives dwindle on. Men and women in suits, checking watches and clutching the daily paper filter through the swinging transparent door. The man with a white button-down shirt, he takes a sip of his coffee and it spills. I wonder if he felt the burn. His face didn't show. The bookish types have taken their usual seats. These are the ones that would have ignored me in high school. I'm not sure if I envy their success or find humor in their measure of self-worth. The artist seems at peace, lost within her imagination, so trusting and unaware of everyone around her. Eyes can say so much, they can do so much. This boy with his unmistakable, slept through something important look. He's easy, I know it, all it takes is just one gaze and he's hooked. The music that they play, it's the same each morning. I can imagine a girl playing her guitar right in front of me. Love, pain, love, pain, the same notes over and over. People begin to leave as brightness is cracking through the dull sky. I prefer the gray, the in-between, where it was neither morning nor night. But day, it comes regardless. Winter was coming to an end. The sun lingered longer and longer. Each day the same as the day before. And then, April 2nd at 3.35 a.m., she decided to forever remain just as she was.